G'day chemists, we're back. Um, today we're going to deal with, it's just a tool, a tool we use in chemistry and that is the Lewis dot structure or the electron dot diagram. Now, this is our only board. I don't know you're going, that's not much work Mr. Whiting, that's pretty rad, thanks. But, I want you to go to the, the class website, and that's whitingchem.wikispaces.com um, and in Chemical Earth, that folder there, you'll see a list of rules for how to draw these beyond this very simple explanation. And I want you to go over that as well. So watch the video, go over those rules. You can either print them out, stick them in your folder, rewrite them yourself, whatever works best for you. Alrighty, so Lewis dot structures, uh, that's the name I prefer, um, or electron dot diagrams, which is a very simple, you know, explains exactly what they are. Um, what they do is they they show for us the valence electrons in the outer shell. Now, every, well, there are a couple of exceptions, but we'll say for now, every atom wants to obey the octet rule. Now, one way to think of the octet rule is that every atom wants eight electrons in the outer shell. Another way to think of the octet rule is that every atom wants to be closest to its nearest noble gas. So they all have eight in their outer shell. The way this is a bit more useful, if you're struggling with the concept of balancing, is this means that lithium, it wants to be closest to its nearest noble gas, which is helium. So for it to be close to helium, it has to lose an electron in the outer shell. Nitrogen, it wants to be closest to its nearest um, noble gas, which is neon, and this means it wants to add or accept three other electrons. Okay, so yeah, that, that's one way to think of the octet rule. It wants to be closest to its nearest noble gas. If you're fine with it, it just wants to have eight, and therefore you can remember which ones it needs to lose or gain, that's up to you. But that's the other way I like to think about it. Alright, so if you look at our individual atoms, it's pretty straightforward. Um, here we have one dot on the outside, and that's because lithium is in group one, it has one valence electron. Boron, it's in group three, it has three valence electrons, one, two, three. And you can see that they're going around like this, and then that we progressively go around in a clockwise fashion to fill up the, the circle. Um, it's not always true, it doesn't matter which way you go. As long, but it's best to pair them up. Electrons tend to be more stable when they're in pairs, and we'll get to that down the bottom here. Um, so nitrogen has five, and you can see that. Neon, which is completely stable, and doesn't react with anything, well, it takes a lot of energy to make it react, is, has all eight in the outer shell. All right, so, we, you've seen this, we've, we've seen it briefly, but we're gonna talk about what we're doing here. So when we add magnesium and chlorine together to get an ionic lattice, magnesium loses two electrons, get rid of them. They're over here. So technically it's out of shell electrons, even though in it's out of shell now it will have eight, it's out of shell electrons, they're over here. So we, we don't redraw the next level down. Um, and you can see that there, that little cross, that's just a different way to differentiate. It's over here with the chlorine. Now chlorine only needs one electron in its outer shell, so we need two of those, that's the coefficient there, for every magnesium. And that's why magnesium, we write down as MgCl2. All right, and then you write the valencies at the top. So that's how you draw an ionic structure for a, sorry, a Lewis dot structure for an ionic compound. Over here, an even simpler one, probably should this first, is potassium iodide. Um, they both got valencies of one, plus one, minus one. Uh, and over here we have, it's seven electrons, because it's a halogen, which means group seven, with, it's one donated electron right there. That's a donated electron, and that comes from the potassium. Um, covalent molecules. Here we have oxygen. It has six in the outer shell. Um, now remember with a covalent molecule, it wants to bond by sharing. It shares electrons, okay? So over here, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, but it's sharing two with its partner. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and this one's doing the same deal. So that's the bonding electrons or shared electrons. That's Lewis dot structures. Now remember, 
go to the website please. Uh, download that's whitingchem.wikispaces.com and look up in Chemical Earth underneath this lesson the set of rules for how to draw a Lewis dot structure. Um, all right, just one other thing. For every, probably for every equation, for every experiment we do, there's going to be a chemical reaction, which means you have your reactants and your product side. It's probably best if you, just for study purposes, every time you write out an equation and you've balanced it, to then do the dot structure version underneath. All right, top work. We'll see you in class.